Now, I want to start from the beginning with you. Yes. We got a lot of things I want to get to. Obviously, okay. Florida stuff going, DeSantis announcing, Trump roasting him, everything. But I think your life experiences have, have informed your perspective in a way that a lot of other people in the media field uh, maybe do not know or can't relate to or they just don't have these life experiences. So bring me back to the beginning. Iran, born, Christian, Assyrian and Armenian? Assyrian and Armenian. Okay. Very briefly, what is Assyrian? Assyrian is Babylonian. They're the first Christians, first warriors. Uh, you know, them and Armenians always debate on who was the first Christian. If you read the Bible, you see Assyrians all the time. Aramaic, so I speak Aramaic, so Passion of the Christ. You speak Aramaic? I speak Aramaic, wow. so in the movie Passion Language of the Christ, Jesus, we bro. understand what they were saying. Wow. Nobody else. Well, I mean, except for seven of us, you know. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wait a minute, you grew up speaking the language the Bible was written? Yes, yes. Is it different in Aramaic than it's, it is in uh, English? So, I'll give you our numbers. That's a Syrian. Yeah, it's a it's very- close. Echad, Shtaim, Shalosh, Arba, Hamesh, Shesh. Yes. Oh, they got to make it about themselves. Right? <laughs> oh, Every oh, single oh, time. Oh, we were having a nice yeah. moment over here uh, with the Christians. Let them have something. Yeah, the Jews come in. Come in and, <laughs> anyway. Uh, okay, so so you're in Iran. Shah falls. Mm -hmm. What is happening in Iran during the, the, the reign of the Shah? So the Shah goes from being this 21-year-old guy, comes in, his father is this powerful man who is kicked out a couple times. He is feared, he is hated, he is you know, respected. He's a guy that raises his son in a way that they're not that close. It's like, you know, it's the father, it's the Shah, the king, and the son has to go do all this different work. He spoke seven different languages, the Shah. Smart guy, he could do interviews in literally seven different languages. He comes in, he changes the game. Uh, Mossadegh was a guy that uh, a lot of the, he would be the modern day Bernie Sanders. So they wanted Mossadegh to be the president. He was gonna give the oil money back to the people, all mm. this stuff. And then with the help of CIA, you'll read this uh, in many different uh, places. The Shah ends up coming in, uh, he uh, becomes the king. And it changes everything in Iran, you know, education improves women, freedom, voice, they can become lawyers, you know, there was a entertainment aspect to it. Frank Sinatra, all these guys used to go to Iran, it was top three richest, like the wealthiest of the wealthiest in the 70s and the late 60s, you would go to Iran, Burma and Cuba. Was okay. it like Dubai? I'm trying to imagine it was what like it is. Dubai. Okay. I mean, listen, uh, Elizabeth Taylor was dating the ambassador Zahedi, they were together. So she would go to visit him, Elizabeth <laughs> okay. Taylor. And she dated everybody, but she was also dating Zahedi <laughs> at the time. And then all of a sudden, you know, Khomeini from France is sending these tapes. Before there was YouTube, there were these tapes that would go viral. So guys were sitting there recording these tapes and giving it away to people. And Khomeini's talking about how bad it is, what's going on in Iran, and how he put this party together, the 2,500 year party in Iran. And that was the end of it. I cannot believe you spent this much money. Look how much money you're spending on the lavish party. He invited everybody to Iran. If you ever see the pictures of this party, it's insane what he did with the party. And then eventually, you know, uh, Jimmy Carter comes in, December 31st, 1977. There's a toast. Jimmy Carter says, this is a very important partner to us. The moment he, le imagine New Year's, you can be anywhere in the world, he's in Iran, okay? He leaves. Next thing you know, gradually revolution starts, mm. one by one by one, and then eventually nine million people revolted after this event that took place. Uh, Sinama wrecks fire in a city called Abadan. Abadan is like a uh, bunch of provinces. It's a. It was a beautiful place. This movie theater, 400 people are in there. They locked the doors from both ends. They turned the place on fire. People died. Oh, wow. The police shit. station is right across the street. Khomeini says it was uh, Shah's people that did a Savak. Savak is like the CIA MI6. And the Shah says, we didn't do anything here. Why would we kill 400 people? Khomeini's, uh, Shah's people like Khomeini's people did this. Anyways, the people believe Khomeini's camp and they said Shah was behind this. Long story short, I'm born October 1878, which is at the peak of Sinema Rex fire. Uh, my mother, when her, you know, we're going to the hospital, curfew 10 o'clock, they had to be escorted. I go to the hospital, I'm born. Uh, three months later, Shah's out, and then Iran falls, and the rest is history. What happens to Christians in Iran at this time? It's a scary time to be a Christian. It's a scary time to be Baha'i. 
It is a scary time to be pro-Shah. It is a scary time to be uh, any military leader, part of Shah's camp. They were, you know, Your killing them left and right. Your father was connected to the Shah? No, he was a fan of the Shah. Uh -huh. my, my dad was a regular guy. We don't come from a, a lot of money. Uh, but my dad, they were imperialists, and my mother, they were communists. Mm. My mother's family, they were strong communists and at the time. And so they couldn't stand the Shah. You know, she, they were happy the Shah fell. Hmm. So I'm in, I'm in the middle of my mom thinks rich people are greedy. My dad thinks poor people are lazy. And I'm hmm. seeing this debate going back. It's yeah, the yeah. best debate ever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you are your father's uh, son. Welcome to America. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> but let me you tell you, my, my mother taught me the paranoia side. Mm -hmm. You know, and I think you need that in business. I think you need that in life. I think you need that. What do you mean by that, the paranoia? Paranoia, where you got it, you know, only the paranoid survive. Andy Grove, the Hungarian entrepreneur who ran Intel, he's the godfather of Silicon Valley where everybody admired this guy. He wrote a book in the 80s and maybe the early 90s called Only the Paranoid Survive in the game mm. of business. If you're not paranoid, boom, somebody takes you out. Same in the military, same in business. You need a little bit of that. So growing up in this kind of a climate in Iran, you're always like, are you Christian? Why do you ask instead of yes, I am? Mm. You know, hey, what nationality are you? Instead of giving the answer, it's like, what's the motive behind mm. the question? Because you're a little bit paranoid. So. That kind of helps. I know it's, people may look at it and say, was that really a good thing or a bad thing? I think it's a very good thing. Okay, so then from Iran, yeah. you guys flee. Yes. Go to Germany. Yes. Refugee camp. Yep. Are you worried about going to like a camp in Germany given the history yeah, of that? Yeah, that was cool. Wow. <laughs> let, me, let me put it to you this way, man. I mean, for us in Iran, when Khomeini died, uh, this is like he died June 2nd, I want to say, 89. Uh, June 2nd or 3rd. He dies. I'm in school. Parents can't find me. You know, there is no Uber, tax, this, that, riots, protesting everywhere. I'm trying to find my mom. I'm 10 years old. And we finally do. They take us home. We get to the house. My mom and dad have this exchange together. We got to get the hell out of here. Oh. We're not staying here. If he stays here, he's got to serve the military here. Boom. Six weeks later, we go to Germany, refugee camp. We're on the plane, Lufthansa. And you hear the announcer saying, you know, uh, you're free to drink alcohol. We've officially crossed the border. And that's ah. when everybody felt free because nobody thought it was real until they that said moment. you can drink alcohol. Wow. Wow. It's a very wild moment, yeah. I will never forget that. Yeah. Wow, okay, you land. What's the refugee camp in Germany like? I mean, listen, man, it's not what you think. It's just a bunch of people that are trying to fight for freedom. You know, we're all uh, from Poland, from Czech, Czechoslovakia at the time, Yugoslavia family, you know, Anna Maria, Miodrag, you know, the staff family over here. And we're all living together. Every, they would come, they would drop off the food. You would go pick it up, the apple, you know, juice, all this stuff, milk, you would bring it in. We had a small little park. It was an army base right next to us. And so we would go and look over the building to see what the guys were blowing up in the army base. So um, that's what it was like. And, and, you know, you'd go to school and they would look at you, you know, you came to our country and, you're making it worse because there was some, you know, a lot of things were going on with the stabbing, the fights, all this stuff. So I'm a Middle Eastern guy. You automatically put that person in the, you can't blame the guys to be thinking that because there was a lot of that going on in Germany, but it was, it was a, uh, it was a different experience. How do you get there. to America? Uh, so we're there for about a year and a half. Eventually we get the green card and uh, we get the call. We're going. And it's November 28, 1990. We land in New York. Uh, I'm looking for uh, Rocky, I'm looking for Goonies, <laughs> I'm looking for Gremlins, if you remember yeah, Gremlins yeah, back in the days, I'm like, where, where are these guys at? I couldn't find any of them, eventually we got to LA. There's some Gremlins out here. There is some Gremlins, gremlins out here. <laughs> and then eventually we, to, we get to LA from New York and you know. Now, any idea why LA, sorry. Well, I mean, you Everybody's have to in LA. pay respect to Mecca, right? Which is Glendale. 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 That's right. I, that was my thought. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right. Granada Hills, then Glendale. And then yeah. we stayed in Glendale for six years. Oh, yeah. wow. So was Everybody that, looks like this in Glendale, by the way. Your yeah. parents' plan the whole time was to go to Glendale? No, 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 not at all. My, my, my dad wanted to stay, but my dad also had a sister in Chicago. So he would always come back and forth from Chicago. In 84, he comes back, he brings this tape with the best 80s song. So when we came in, you playing the 80s music, it was sick because every time I listen to 80s, I go back to that tape. By the way, whoever picked the songs, I'm still trying to figure this out. <laughs> Marquita. Calvin Harris, Shazde <laughs> Khanum, you know, all this stuff he played, it was great. Um, but yeah, you know, it, it, uh, it, it was a great experience. It was okay, a great experience. you're growing up in LA. 
you feel probably a little bit more comfortable, I imagine, because you're growing up around a lot of people who kind of look like you, mm-hmm. shared experience. I think at this time, there's a lot of Persians that are moving into Beverly Hills. They also left after the shop yeah. fell, right? So there's, so now maybe you don't feel as uh, out of place. Is that fair to say? No, but I felt out of place in Germany. I don't feel out of place in, uh, in No, I'm Glendale. saying in, in, in Absolutely, LA. you're right. Okay. I feel out of place. Uh, um, you're in place in Glendale. Yes, yeah, absolutely. The, the desire to be American, right? To prove your Americanness. Does that happen when you're a kid moving here, you're seeing the movies and you're like, I wanna take part in this experiment? Does it happen when you're in LA? I'm wondering because you go to the Air Force and I've always thought that like, that is a way of proving that you're willing to pay the price to be part of this amazing experiment. Was that your motivation? So, you know, the, the, the concept, the evolution of becoming a proud American probably happened due to a few different events. One of them I would say is as you age, whatever your parents sold you, whatever your teachers sold you, whatever the pastor's uncle sold you, then you find the contradictions in the arguments. And you're like, yeah, I don't know about that. Because in Iran, you're growing up in an environment where everybody says, mad, bad, Omrika, mad, bad, Omrika, death upon America. And they're flagellating their back and you're like looking outside hearing these 10,000 men screaming like, why death upon America? It's the evil empire, it's horrible. Let me tell you what they do, they're, the war. they're behind all the wars and they do this and they're like, okay, maybe they're right, maybe they're not, I don't know yet. Wow. Skeptical, let me find out for myself. Yeah. Rich people are greedy and all this other stuff. And I'm like, wait a minute, what are you talking about? The only way you become rich is to help other people around you also become rich. You can't become rich by yourself. Most people that build a company that grew up they don't have 100% equity in the company. Mm. You have to share the equity. Other people come in. You have to have jobs. You have to recruit good people. You have to keep them. You're about to lose a guy. You don't give him that race. He's going to go elsewhere. You can't become rich by yourself. You're going to need other people that's going to help you out. So contradictions. Then I joined the military. I'm in the Army, 101st Airborne Division. It's September of 97. We walk in the unit. They say, there's a movie coming out. It's about our unit. As long as we can get it, we watch a movie. I'm all in. I love movies. So we go. 600 kids, when I say kids, 18 to 25. <laughs> this movie, you're gonna be the first to see it before it's public because it's about your unit. You have to be proud about this movie. It's your unit, it's the badge. <laughs> it's, I'm like, okay, great, let's see what this is. Saving Private Ryan. No. Let me tell you, no. dude, no. movie ends. We're all on fire, emotional. <laughs> I'm gonna seize the, I'm gonna take care of my life. I'm so fired up about this movie. Then I'm coming out saying, you know what? I'm proud to be an American. Then we go to one of the military ceremonies, whether it was Memorial Day or 4th of July, and I'm looking at these 40-year-old generals, toughest men in tears coming down and they have a look like this, but they're crying because they lost a soldier and you know how they fought for freedom and everybody else kicking it, hanging out. They're not thinking about the people that had the hard lives and I'm interviewing these guys. What was it like? What was he like? Who's your friend? Who's this? And he graduated like, listen, man, this is, this is an incredible country. And then more and more and more, as you come up and a regular guy like this with a 4.6 GPA, <laughs> 15, 10 SAT, <laughs> you know, all of a sudden you're like, uh, man, you can actually win here. And then gradually the levels to winning keeps going. And you're like, you know, what else is possible here? It's just like playing a game. I'm gonna play this game out and see where it goes. And then obviously I can sell, this is the greatest country in the world uh, comfortably in many different ways. Results, freedom, you know, what we've been able to produce, why so many people come here. If we're a restaurant, it's a restaurant that's always full. Everybody's in line trying to get into this restaurant. Even when we're busy, even more people wanna come here. Legally, illegally, risk their lives. It doesn't matter, everybody wants to come here. So now, that doesn't guarantee this place is gonna stay this great. Mm. You know, I'm having breakfast with a, 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 a very successful man in, in Hollywood and we're, we're going back and forth and the question that becomes, okay, so now what do we do? I got four kids. I got an 11 year old, nine year old, six year old, she's gonna be seven tomorrow. And I got a two year old, she'll be two in a month. We have a great life, but man, can you imagine? It's kind of like, well, I made my money. I'm just gonna chill. I'm not gonna put myself out there because I'm just kind of want to be invited to all these parties. I don't want to be not invited to these parties. I don't want to be not part of these networks. No, we got to do our part as well. So mm. I feel there's a responsibility now to, uh, to bring it from a different angle. You know, I'm Middle Eastern, so I can talk to white, black, Hispanic, Middle Eastern, Asian, Christian, atheist, rich, poor, middle, upper, educated, uneducated, let's talk. Let's hash it out. Let's see how many things we have in common and what things we disagree with, 
Give me your argument why. Give me your argument why. Now let's see what we got there. So I think that's that's kind of the concept of what happened with the love for America. I wanted to ask you a question. When you're growing up, you come here. What's your mentality about how you're going to take advantage of being in America? Are you looking at it like, I'm going to start my own business. I oh, have no capitalism way. at my fingertips. No. I came here not trusting America. I came here like looking at the white man like, I've learned a lot about you, Mr. White Man. You know, <laughs> I see you coming to school in the BMW and we're coming in in the used 79 Honda Accord hatchback, you know, that only goes drive, doesn't go reverse. Okay, you're, <laughs> you're special. You think you're better than me, right? So yeah. that, that bit of animosity or kind of looking at them uh, funny, that was there. 